Hey everybody, it's Waylon. Over time I've been getting a lot of comments in my videos on how I get aerial flyby shots in my DayZ videos, so I figured I'd expand on the content that's already out there and show you exactly how I do it. First we'll be porting Chernus into Arma 3 and granted, this isn't the first video on the subject, but what's going to separate this video from the others is my camera techniques as well as how to avoid pitfalls with the current Arma 3 build. So step 1, port Chernus into Arma 3. Step 2, adjust video settings in Arma 3 for the best video quality. Step 3, go over some camera techniques to give you the best shot possible. And step 4, go over some pitfalls that will stop you from accessing the preview function in Arma 3. To make this process as easy and painless as possible, I have my Daisy and Arma 3 in my favorites. As you can see the pathway above to find this folder. Local Disk C, Program Files 86, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Daisy. So now that we're in our Daisy folder, we're going to copy the add-ons folder by hitting Control C. We're going to go back to our desktop and hit Control v to paste. While that's pasting to the desktop, we're going to make a new folder. We're going to call this folder at Daisy SA. We're going to speed this process up a little bit. Nobody wants to sit here and watch this progress bar creep all the way to the right. So now that we have our add-ons folder on our desktop, we're going to open it up. We're going to go in and remove all the PBOs that start with characters underscore. Let's highlight those. Let's get rid of them. Boom, gone. Now let's go down to our modules. Let's get rid of those PBOs. Now let's go down to UI. We're going to get rid of all the PBOs that start with UI on it. Now that we've got those files deleted, I'd like to talk to you briefly about a bug that's associated with some of these PBOs, in particular the structures underscore pawns PBO. Now if you have a shot that has lakes or pawns in it, you want to keep these PBOs in place because if you remove them, you won't be able to see the water. If you have a shot that's not around lakes or ponds, you want to get rid of this PBO and I'll explain why later in the video. All right, so let's close this window. Let's take our add-ons folder. We'll put it in our at Daisy SA folder. Let's go in our AMA3 folder. And reiterating the pathway again, local disk C, program files 86, Steam, Steam apps, common, Arma 3. So as you can see, this is all of our other mods. Let's take our at Daisy SA folder and drop it right in. Boom, that's it. Total folder size should be under 10 gigs, so 8.5 gigs sounds just about right. But before we go any further into the process, we're going to load up Arma 3 to get you the best video settings possible. Let's go down to configure. Let's go to our video settings. And let's move right over to anti-aliasing and post-process settings. As you can see, my shopping filter is turned all the way up. You'll want to keep it like that. And the depth of field is turned all the way to the left. What depth of field does is it puts a blur around the edges of your video. And you definitely don't want that. Take my word on that. So we keep that at zero. And that's it. That's all you need to do. Let's move on to the next step. Let's go to our library in Steam. Right click on Arma 3. Scroll down to properties. And we're going to click the set launch options button. This is where we put in our launch parameter. So type in dash mod equals at daisy sa. And hit OK. Now we're going to start Arma 3. Let's go to our parameters tab. And under basic, let's make sure our at daisy sa folder is present in the text field for mods. All right, so let's start Arma 3. This prompt is completely normal. Just hit OK. Everything is fine. Again, this is completely normal. Hit close all. And as you can see, now that we have the launch parameters set, the menus are overlapping each other. This is exactly why we went into the video settings and made our edits before adding the launch parameters, because the menus are overlapping. You would never been able to adjust your video settings under these conditions. So let's go to our editor. Let's go to Cherneris to continue here. Let's close this out. These prompts will eventually stop. Scrolling on your mouse wheel will zoom you out and zoom you in. See, here's another one. Right click and hold will move you around the map. We're going to start at Northwest Airfield. First, we're going to put a unit down by hitting F1 and double clicking on our map. Hit OK. Now we're going to hit F3 to put down a trigger and double click on the map. Under activation, the drop down menu, you're going to go down to Radio Alpha. And on this text field right here, you're going to put the code in that's in the description. Hit OK. Now we're going to go to Preview. OK, so here we are in Player Cam Mode. To get into Free Cam Mode, hit 001. WASD moves you about. See the little white dot in the middle of your screen? You're going to want to hit the L button to remove that. 
Q and Z moves your camera up and down. See that line across the screen? That's the horizon bug I told you about that's associated with the structures underscore ponds dot PVO. If I was shooting film here where there are no lakes or ponds needed for my shots, I would go ahead and remove the structures underscore ponds dot PVO. If you want to get a preview shot over a certain area, the best way to do that is to move without any modifiers. What I mean by that is if you hold down Shift and W, your camera moves really fast. If you try and speed up or slow down your shots in an editor, you'll want to be as close to 60 FPS as possible. When you modify your speed, you lose FPS, so you want to pay special attention to that. It'll take a lot longer to get a shot, as you can see here, it's moving pretty slow. But you want to have this control over motion when you put the video in the editor of your choosing. This is a little trick shot I'd like to show you. If you want to showcase a building or an object and you want to get in front of the building, hit the F button so you're locked onto it. If you hit A or D, your free cam will move in a perfect circle around your object. That's pretty cool, right? If you want to speed the shot up, just hit the shift button. Wow, you can really see the pond water bug in full effect here. If you want to add some pizzazz to your shot, hold down the S button to that combination for a nice transition. If you plan on doing more than one shot, you want to remove your unit and trigger. It took me a minute to figure this out, but all you have to do is hover over your trigger or unit and hit the delete button. I recently recorded some film for my 0.59 showcase showdown and wasn't able to use Arma for flyby shots. The reason I wasn't able to port the 0.59 version of Turner's over to Arma was because I got these errors when hitting the preview button. What would happen was I'd hit the preview button once and some prompt would come up, so I'd hit the preview button again and I'd get a series of error messages as seen here. I thought Bohemia patched it because of the access violation code which got me into thinking about the overlapping menus you saw earlier in the video. I started to think they didn't want guys like me using Arma to port Turner's for whatever reason. So I forwarded this issue over to our research team and they found a workaround for the issue. All you need to do is go to your library, right click on Arma 3, go to launch options and add an additional launch parameter which I've left you in the description. That should fix the problem. This concludes the introduction for porting Chernus into Arma 3. If the demand is there, we'll revisit this video with advanced camera techniques. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel for new and interesting content. Let us know what you liked or didn't like in the comment section below. Have yourself a happy new year and see you next time on Inside Daisy Standalone.